Hello and welcome to week five. We were a little delayed getting this one in, but uh, we're going to get right to it, okay? We're a little different environment than I'm used to. I'm not, uh, due to COVID restrictions, you know, can't quite record at the places I usually do. So we're going to make the most of it and uh, let's get into it. So last week we talked about uh, power chords. We finished up, you know, reviewing uh, all of the strings and we introduced power chords and a few more scales that we can get into. So we'll do a quick review of our power chords. And then this week, I'm gonna go over a lot of the basic major and minor chords that you'll hear uh, through a lot of the major songs that are out there. <laughs> and then the final week, which will be week six, uh, we will finish off with teaching some very basic songs. And you can continue your guitar journey from there. So. Let's get into the power chord review, okay? So to remind you, a power chord, uh, and I'm looking at my guitar now, I'm sorry about the shadows a little bit, but we should have enough light. <clears throat> so power chord intro is where we're gonna start, okay? And that's, remember, we just wanna make sure we're not muting. Power chords are really easy for that. Oh, and my tuning is wrong. <laughs> One thing to always keep in mind, guys. Right? Check your tuning before we start playing. Now, my guitar is pretty handy here. I've actually got a tuner on, on the top. It's kind of nice. So I can just kind of strum it and it'll tell me how close I am. So, but again, always make sure you're in tune. So let's try the start of this again, okay? So power chords, remember, we want to use that middle finger for this very first one. Here, how there's two distinct notes and then, okay, we learned that. And then we're going to move to, as we said, our pointer finger and then our ring finger, maybe our pinky helping it along, okay? And okay, we can move that up. And all the way up, right? It just keeps going. So, first song we learned was Smoke on the Water. Now, as I recall, we went through last week, we want to work on the bass note. Right, which is the bottom note on each power chord, just to make sure that we know how we're playing it. So, for Smoke on the Water, we have, using just my pointer finger, okay? Okay, and then we're gonna use that middle for the second, and then the ring, the rest of them, okay? And we're sliding. So this is a good skill to practice, is sliding your finger, okay? And it's... Wow. <laughs> All right, and then we just put it together. So we have. Okay, and that's your very basic smoke on the water. Okay, we went through the bottom note, we went through the top note, and then we put them together. Again, really encourage you to do that for every song especially when you're just starting out. Once you get a feel for it, power chords are super easy, okay? Um, and actually, just as a, as a note for future-proofing, I guess, yourself, a lot of times what you'll see, um, and especially once your fingers get a little bit bigger, or for the adults that are trying this, your hand should be big enough, you'll actually see it written. So, for example, that first note will actually be zero, two, and then a second two on top of it. And what they're doing is they're just really adding some oomph to that sound. Okay, because if I do this with just the one, one, two on there, okay, you have a nice basic clean sound, but if I add that, right, we get a little bit more of a, you may not be able to hear it right off the get go, but there's a little bit extra in the background that really helps you kick. But what we have to do then is when we move up to that next note, so that's our first note. We actually have to put both our ring and our pinky on separate notes. So you'll see I have, and then I put that on the fifth, and then this pinky goes on the fifth fret, but on the fourth string. Versus, you can hear that little ring in the back, and it adds that little extra. So we go. Now you'll notice one thing I just did there is I didn't put these two fingers. I didn't put my middle and my ring. I actually put my, um, I actually put my ring and my pinky. 
And it's just part of that sliding. So now, if I were to do that, when we add a second number on top of all these, and again, the second, the number on the fourth string on the D string is the exact same as the one that's on the fifth string. So if it only shows two notes, you can add your pinky on the note above, okay? But you'll notice I can slide it because it's just staying in the same position the whole time. I just add the pointer finger. So then we have. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes it easy because then I'm literally just sliding my fingers, right? We could play it here. All right, something to work on for now. Focus on just the two fingers, okay? But this is just another tip for that power chord as you move forward, okay? Because there's a lot of songs that use power chords, especially if you're into more of that, um, you know, the rock and roll, you know, kind of grunge, alternative rock kind of stuff, okay? Um, all right, so the next one we learned was Wild Thing. Again, I'll just go through it briefly using bass note, top note, combined, and then we'll move on. Okay, so we got. And again, that's a very basic version of this song. Those of you that hear it live, there's a lot of repeating going on, but this is just giving you the basics. Okay, and then same thing, uh, ring finger. and easy okay and then the last one that we had touched on oh my page is getting highlighted here <laughs> is uh highway to hell by acdc okay <clears throat> so this one remember we had a little trick here because there was a couple things we added we had the x's right which is our muted strum right because i'm strumming but there's no discernible noise like it's kind of the same no matter where i put my fingers right so we want to go with that. And then the bottom one is kind of a hold. Okay, top note. Sounds kind of weird with the, uh, did I type an eight on that? I see now I might've typed an eight. Didn't mean to type an eight. <laughs> that last note's supposed to be a five because an eight to a two stretch, that's kind of crazy. Okay, so we put it together. And that line you can play back and forth again, you listen to the song, right? But then it's. Be like a highway to hell. Highway to hell. Okay. Let uh, let Angus Young sing it for you. He's a lot better at it than I am. Okay. For those of you who don't know who Angus Young is, lead singer of ACDC. Look him up. All right. Now let's move on to our chords. Okay. So, um, you know what? We're not going to get to these songs on the, on this page that I'm looking at next. So we will go all the way, at least in my scrolling, <laughs> to our chord page, okay? Now, you will see that there are numbers beside these chords, okay? Oh, clicking too far on my screen here. Okay, the numbers are gonna represent kind of the, uh, we'll say that the order of easiness, but also the order of importance in a sense, because, excuse me, the E minor, the E minor, C, uh, where am I looking here? Where's number three on my page? G and D. Okay, those are very commonly used across a lot of songs. If you can learn those, um, you can play a lot of songs. A lot of songs. You could type in, you know, you know E minor, C, D, uh, G songs, and it'll throw a whack load at you, okay? So we're gonna break these down best we can. And the biggest thing to remember now is when we're looking at this chord chart, 
we're looking at it as if this is the top, right? So there's a black line there. That represents this white line, okay? And a couple, another thing to note on there is you'll notice above that black line, there are circles and there are X's, okay? So the circles represent an open. That means we don't put a, we don't put a finger on it. It's our zero on our tablature. That, that represents a zero on our tablature and it means don't put your finger on it, but we need to hear it open because for example, if we play our E minor, you'll notice our E minor is pretty much the same as our power chord, right? Our O2 power chord. Okay, but we just add everything. So the difference between an E power chord and an E minor, you get a drastically different sound. Okay, but this is just the same as always. You gotta really make sure you're not muting any strings, right? Because if I'm here, I'm something sound is right, right? Because I'm muting. If I play each one, I shouldn't be playing that or muted, right? We wanna make sure that every note is clear. Now, you'll notice when I, something to note, I should say. Anything that is minor has a bit of a, we'll say sad, offbeat kind of sound to it, because this is the E minor. We'll, I'll break down these when we get to them, but this is an E minor versus an E. Oh, sorry. You'll notice that's a nice, pretty deep sound. You know, if you're singing a happy song, like, you can feel like you're trotting along, but this would be, mm, you kind of get that idea. I don't really know how else to describe it better than that. E is like you're happily trotting. E minor means you're, you know, sad or angrily walking towards something. Doom is coming, right? So it doesn't mean minors can't accompany a very upbeat song, but all it means is that it, if you're playing it just directly against its major partner, it will sound kind of that doomy, gloomy kind of sound, okay? So, E minor. What I want you to do with every chord we play throughout this is walk it through. Right? I can hear each note nice and clear. And now I'm playing it, I can play with it. This is, chords are a good place to really make sure you're starting to strum each individual note by itself. We haven't played a song that involves individual notes on the first or the sixth string combined. So we're just gonna go through it all, okay? So E minor, played full. You'll notice there's opens on all of the above, okay? That means we play all six strings, and that's it. That is the easiest chord you can probably play, <laughs> okay? Next, number two on our list is a C. A C is a very important uh, chord. Uh, it's in a lot of songs, okay? You'll notice when we look at it, right away there's the X on the sixth string. Again, we're holding our guitar like this, which means that we're holding it this way, which means six, well, it's reverse on the camera. <laughs> okay, you know, backwards technology camera stuff here, okay? But uh, the sixth string, which is our fat one, is on the left, okay? So that means, you know, like if we're looking at it this way, like I look at it and I say, okay, there's an X there, okay? That means I don't wanna play the sixth string. But the other nice thing too is this tells you on this page, there's a number on all those circles, okay? So the circle is telling you what finger you should be using. So the three is our ring finger, right? Two is our middle finger, and the one is our pointer finger. So this says on the third fret, on the fifth string, okay? A C, we learned that one before, okay? And that's where a lot of chords actually come from is the, the name of the chord is actually based off of the bass note or the lowest note along the string, okay? So that E, we played it, you know, that's an E, the open note is an E. If you look at this, the lowest is a C. And you'll notice as we go along to each one, the lowest notes on the strings is always gonna be played in that chord, okay? So we have third string, fifth fret. We're gonna use our middle finger now on the fourth string, second fret. You're gonna notice on that third string it's open. And then the second string is our first first finger, and then again we have open. So, you can hear, it's nice and pretty, okay? This is a major chord, 
and I'm gonna just give her a nice strum, but not on the sixth string. Now, if we were to play that by accident, you can tell we don't want that as the bass note, okay? So, this is a good time to practice and really make sure you look at that and make sure, okay, yep, I am strumming the fifth string down, okay? That's our C. Moving on, number three is our G. Now, G can be tricky for some people because it involves a pretty big stretch. However, your hand should fall nicely in. So, again, we look at the bass note, it's a G, right? We got E, we got E, F, G. So, again, this is using, obviously, if you look at it, it says we're using the sixth string and the first string. So, chances are we're probably strumming everything, and if you look, every note in the middle is open, except where we have our fingers. So, middle finger on that G, okay? Then we're gonna put our pointer finger on the second fret on the fifth string. And then lastly, we're gonna put our ring finger now, for those of you that maybe have difficulty getting that finger there, okay, you can use your pinky, but you should be able to get your ring finger. And that's gonna go on the third fret on the first string, okay? Now, when we get into something like this, and same with the C as well, okay, and I'll go, I'll go back briefly, you have to be cautious of muting. Again, we've talked of muting before, but on some of these, it's really, really difficult the way your fingers have to bend. A G is fairly okay for that, just the biggest one is to make sure that your ring finger, or sorry, your middle finger is above and kind of almost pushing, pushing just the edge on that sixth string, because I can play. You hear if I don't quite get it, my fifth string is muted, so I really gotta make sure that I kind of push that string up a little bit to make room for that string to vibrate, and then I can put that finger down on the second, on the fifth string. But then again, we don't want to be muting our four strings. We want to, again, really kind of push that up. So when I play it through, okay, and then we can get a nice, that's a nice pretty G. Right? And when you finally get it, guys, mess around, enjoy it. You, you can be like, I got a chord. Right? Get that angry, ah, or the pretty, you know. Okay, next one we're gonna move on to, okay? And you'll notice right away is uh, on number four, which is our D, okay? There's two X's, okay? On the sixth and the fifth string. Well, what's our bass note, guys? Our bass note for a D is the D, which we learned way back is on the fourth string. So we don't need these top two strings. Okay, now this one might be tricky because your fingers really got to kind of work around each other. All right, however, you usually don't have to worry about muting on this one. Okay, um, there's a couple ways you could play this. Do your best to play it following the guide, but the other way is you could kind of bar it, which means you're using one finger for multiple notes. Okay, but we won't worry about that. I want you to try and get your fingers used to kind of bending and cranking around in weird positions, okay? So, uh, we're gonna put our pointer finger on the third string, second fret. We're gonna put our ring finger, third fret on the second string. And lastly, now this is the only one that muting could occur, is if, you're, if your uh, middle finger, or your ring finger, sorry, is bent down too far, then you'll get this sound, you won't get the full ring out, okay? And then we want to put our middle finger on that second fret. So when we play it through again, we're not playing these two. We're not playing those. Start at the fourth. And then play them all together. Okay? So there we go. We have just learned the first four, we'll say, easiest uh, chords you can learn. We'll keep going, okay? We got a couple more minutes here, I'll try to go through, uh, how many did I write on there? Five, six, seven. Okay, we'll get through five, six, seven, um, and then I'll maybe introduce the first song, but I want you to try and play with these first, then we'll get to it, okay? So, A minor. Again, you'll notice, X on the sixth string, so we're not gonna play that one. 
we have an open, okay, because we know the fifth string is our A, okay. The minor just means, again, it's going to have that little bit of a mellower song sound, you know, versus the A, happy A minor. Right, when you play them side by side, you can really start to hear it, right? But an A minor actually falls in well with a few of the major chords. But So A minor, uh, we're going to set it up with our, kind of like we did with the E, uh, the, with the E minor, okay, where we have our second finger and our third finger as the primaries. Um, and then we add uh, just that first finger on the second fret there, okay? So it'll sound, as we walk it down, let me bring my guitar up a bit for you. Okay, and then we just play all five. Nice and somber. <laughs> okay, it's an A minor. Next we're gonna go to the E, okay? Now, if you look at the A minor there, and you look at the E, they're the exact same chord shape. And you will see this a lot on the guitar. There's very similar chord shapes throughout. Um, they may not always be on the same, obviously they're not gonna be on the same notes or else it'd be the same note. Um, but there's similar shapes. You always, you have the like kind of walk down one like we have with our C and our um, F, which we'll get to, I don't have it on this one, I should have it. Um, we'll touch on it because it's a tricky one. Um, but we have, this kind of shape, we have the stacking walk down shape, then we have like this weird kind of, you know, D shape that we have, and then we have the full one. So there's different shapes. Um, that's why we try and learn different ones to help with our overall finger dexterity, okay? So the A minor is fairly straightforward. Now, if you literally take that exact shape, okay, that exact shape, and just move it, you know, up this way, one string each. So I'm going to move. Instead of the two, three on the three and four, or sorry, instead, let's put it this way. Instead of putting my fingers on the second, third, and fourth strings, move them down to put them in the same position on the third, fourth, and fifth string. And then just play everything. So A minor, same position. I'm going to try and show you. And then we just whoop, very ever so slightly. And then we get a whole different note, and that's that major. There's a lot of songs that'll have the E major, A minor alongside each other because they have one, they're easy to play back to back, plus they fall in nicely together, okay? So E major, okay, or E. Again, make sure before every chord you're learning, you can play each note without muting, okay? So that's our E. Last one we're gonna play is A. Now, we haven't seen this chord shape yet. Uh, it's a full stack on the same note. Uh, this is another one that a lot of people will bar. However, in order to get the right sound, we don't want to um, mute or uh, get that first string blocked off. Okay, so I personally, so there's two ways to play this, okay? The way I play it is using my uh, last three fingers, okay? So I'll actually go two, three, four. Now, if you look at this A diagram, it actually wants you to do the same shape as the D that we made. I don't know, different shape. D minor would be that, but anyways. Um, they actually want you to go two, one. It's very tricky, okay? Because your fingers have to really all be bunched together like you'll see, that's my third finger, and my first finger, and then my second finger. And it's a really, really tight squeeze. Like I can play it, everything rings out clean, but it's really hard on the fingers, especially when you want to transfer to different ones. So personally, and you can try each way, see what fits best for you. Those are smaller hands. This way might work better because it's stronger fingers if your pinky's not strong enough. I do two, the two is on the same, but then I go three, four, okay? And then when I play it, okay? That's my recommendation on how to play it. Do whichever one you feel works best, okay? And again, we're playing the bottom five strings. You can see the X on the six strings, so we don't want to play that one because again, it just adds a weird element to it, okay? Uh, plus we know that's the A, which means it's got to be the bass note, right? Um, 
you know, you can kind of think about that. Okay, I want to play a G. Okay, well, uh, oh, chances are I'm going to start a G here. I want to play, you know, um, an F. Chances are this, this might be involved. But it's not. Uh, there is a way to play the F, right, where you get the full, uh, full shebang here. Okay, but that's, well, that's a more advanced version. We are going to go and do the F, and that'll be the last one for this week, okay? So the F is just below our E, or number six on the, on the tier, we'll say. Um, and you'll notice one thing immediately that stands out is they say there's a you're supposed to use number one finger, your pointer finger, on both the first and second string. Okay, so a lot of people will kind of play a cheated method of this. Okay, where they don't even play the bottom string because a lot of times it does they don't get that uh, clean sound, right? So it's supposed to come up. But it's really hard because what you have to do is you're going to put your pointer finger on the fifth or on the second fret or ah, <laughs> on the second string first fret okay but then you have to lay it down okay so you have to really kind of crank that finger okay this has to push really hard on both okay and you can start doing you can start from that point so if you want to start and I can play and then I have to add and then add, but it's it's very tricky, okay? Um, so if you want to, you can consider the first string has an X on it as well, um, but this is your first time playing, really try to master that. We want we don't want you cheating for it, right? Okay, like I, I've been playing for a lot of years, and the F is still one that gets me. There's a lot of times I'll play it almost like an abbreviated C. And I'll get that fifth string involved. There's probably a different name for it. It's probably like a CF major, CF sharp, something like that. But um, yeah, so that would be your F, okay? So um, that's it for this week. Lots of chords for you to play with, okay? And I really want you to work on, you know, really work on getting those shapes and not muting, playing it through very clearly each one so that, you know, you don't get the muting, okay? And if you can only play like a part of the chord, that's okay as well, right? If you can get, you know, the top part, you know, on like a G, but for some reason you can't get that bottom, that's okay. Work with what you can get, build up, all right? So next week we're gonna, which will be our last week, I believe, um, We'll actually learn a few basic songs, um, which will also help you learn chords, and then you'll be on your guitar away. Um, you can always reach me. Uh, if you have questions, reach out to um, you know the website, and you can uh, just ask for more information to reach out to me if you have questions about guitar moving forward. Um, but again, there's a lot of great resources out there. So next week we'll do chords, and then maybe I'll give the big ending spiel then, okay? so. I uh, hope everyone had a good Easter, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.